going to go ahead and get started. Um, so welcome to Maryland Federation of Arts Fall Member Show Awards. My name is Craig Friedrich, and I am the Vice President of Operations on the MFA Board of Directors. So thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Also with us this afternoon is our juror, the Assistant Director of the School of Art and Interim Director of Painting and Drawing at George Mason University, Robert Yi. I'm going to share his bio. Robert Yi was born in Seoul, South Korea, and immigrated to the United States at the age of four. He received his MFA from American University, graduated from the University of Virginia with a BA in Foreign Affairs, and the Corcoran College of Art and Design with a BFA. He received a residency to the New York Studio Residency Program in Berlin, Germany. Robert has exhibited in group shows at the Corcoran Gallery of Art and the Civilian Art Projects in Washington, D.C., Academia di Belle Arti di Brera in Milan, Italy, AICAD NYSRP in New York City. I apologize if I'm supposed to read those out loud. <laughs> and at the Metropolitan Art Project in the city of Fairfax, Virginia. Robert has also served on numerous juries, including the Torpedo Factory, Bethesda Painting Awards, Bethesda Fine Arts Festival, Congressional Art Competition, Scholastic Art Competition, MFA, Vienna Art Society, and Fairfax Art League. Robert has served as the director for Corcoran Continuing Education and Corcoran Pre-College Programs at George Washington University and at the Corcoran College of Art and Design. At Mason, Robert currently serves as the assistant director, senior graduate and undergraduate academic advisor and interim director of painting and drawing at George Mason University's School of Art in Fairfax, Virginia. Before I hand it over to Robert, though, we have one award presented and funded by Susie and Rob Conley. It is an award for 3D work given at each member show. The Conley Award goes to Arthur Smalley for Teist. Congratulations, Arthur, on the Conley Award. And now on to our juror awards. Robert, as I mentioned, is a returning juror to MFA. Robert, can you please talk to us about your juring process for this show and present the awards? Yes. Hello, everyone. So um, I'm always always nervous. I, I think I get more nervous when I'm on front of the Zoom camera than actually in person. And that's funny because I usually speak to about 180 people, you know, in my classroom when I do lectures. So having I don't know why I'm having 25 people or 30 people on uh, on the Zoom is making me so nervous. But I think what it is is when I'm speaking to my class, I'm talking to I'm talking to burgeoning. I mean, artists that are you know young artists, but here I'm talking to a group of my peers, right? So I consider um, you know, the people, the work that I've seen as you as professional artists and um and it's just a, a, and a me trying to from you know taking my opinion and trying to grab uh, you know give you a presentation of what 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 at that time of day or or that moment that I felt um kind of excelled uh, and what I liked and I want to say that um you know as far as juring is concerned and I think I've said it the first time that I I, I um uh, juried in the MF in Annapolis is that um jurying is you know, I, I think a lot of it is personal, right? So you choose a juror and then, you know, that person's personal view, it may be completely different from somebody else that you choose and they may have a completely, you know, uh, different choice of who they, what they think is, um, you know, uh, their choice for uh, their level. So I want to say, you know, art is subjective. And, you know, when it comes to picking, um, you know, the works, if I'm like, I'm, um, you know, prioritizing which is the best, you know, I want people to know that it is my personal opinion and it's not the law, it's not the standard. So if your work was not um, selected, it's not because, you know, it, it, it's, um, you know, it is not at the level of the person that was, it just happens to be for, for what, who my, what I chose. I would say overall, the work that I've seen were all 
all pretty amazing. And I'm, I recognize a whole bunch of work that I've seen from prior and works that I've seen um, in other shows before. I, I think um, some of you have continued the work and I've seen how much you've progressed with it. And um, it's, it's pretty awesome that I had an opportunity and that honor to judge that. And I want to say that what is different in how I chose or selected work or had a mind for um, uh, in, in selecting work was not only skills, but, uh, but a lot with content. And, and, you know, the work that I was impressed by uh, in this body of uh, work that was submitted over the over 500, I think that people had more of an eye or a, con a, a conscious on the world and society and what's going on. As artists, I've said before, we are kind of like, you know, we do two things. One, we bring aesthetic and beauty. We share beauty into the world, but also we are agents where we can, um, you know, translate or kind of dictate what is going on in the world. Kind of uh, kind of the record keeper of like, or like, a, a you know, a snapshot in time uh, and, and what's going on in society. And we bring that in a form that people can see. And, you know, and I I chose work that kind of spoke to me when it hit, it, 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 um, you know, it, the works translated, uh, translated more than just how beautiful they were, but also the message that it carried. I also remember, I, I mean, I don't know where I heard this before, and I think as this is relevant, I just want to remember, I want to, I was thinking of saying this to you guys, and what they, what I remember is that the fun, the thing about artists, the only true magic that is in the world and the only true magicians that are in the world today are artists because we have the ability, you have the ability to conjure up things out of nothing or out of other elements and then create something that's completely new and completely different, right? That is the only, that is a real, that is real magic that you're creating, right? And the magic that I've seen today was, is, is amazing. And the magic that, uh, the magic that I saw in the works, you know, not only spoke to me, but also spoke to what is going on in society and, and had messages. And, and I really appreciate the work that I saw. So I have to say that, um, you know, like I said in the, my um, in my uh, presentation, my little statement, I see work that is aesthetic, that aesthetically speaks to joy, pain, politics, and Mother Earth, and how we treat each other. And I think this was, I think that comment really speaks to the the work that I saw in, in the present in, in what you have, what you submitted. And uh, I guess at this point, what I'll do is I'm going to, uh, you know, I chose a few honorable mentions, a runner up in the first place. I have to tell you again that it was a very difficult choice of selecting who would be there because you all are so good. And the amount of talent that's here is pretty amazing. So I guess what we'll do is move to the next slide. So Leslie Kiefer. So I also have to say that um, it was it was kind of nice to have, and it was kind of challenging to see the body of work without any sort of, um, um, you know, prior knowledge, except for maybe if I recognize the artist, of like what the, besides the title, you know, um, you know, what the story, what the story behind the work is, who the artist is, you know, and I think that matters in, in, in the work that I've seen, you know, whether the person is a woman, man or um you know what what um uh, you know what race that person is or where they come from or what that background and I, I think that adds to it but from blindly seeing um the work I thought Leslie's work and the fact actually the body of work was you know using photography in a way that becomes painterly and also hauntingly like magic. This felt, well, I was gonna say it sounded, it looked like fireworks, but also it felt otherworldly. It felt as uh, there was an esoteric element to it, um, you know, and also, I think it also spoke to the marvels and the, um, the, um, the beauty of nature and how, um, you know, everything, it comes back to nature again, fireworks and, fire, uh, and flowers uh, and petals. It was, it was, it was hauntingly beautiful. Um, the next one. 
So Arthur Smiley, I guess this was, uh, I, I chose right as well, because this won the three, the, the, the sculpture award. Uh, you know, not only the technique involved, but the amount of work involved. And from, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at as a 2D image on a photograph, but I can imagine it, from the photography, it feels, you know, large and heavy. It feels like the maze. I feel there's, it's like, like a, a, an Escher, an Escher uh, drawing come to life and kind of spoke to, you know, the thought process of what is going on in, in people's lives and how things are winding. You know, sometimes, I mean, I, mean, I guess what's good about work, and I say this to my students, is that you know what the artist's intent is and how the viewer receives the image does not have to does not have to match right i think the goal of the successful part is as part is if it actually you know if it if the work moves or speaks to the person in whatever in whatever way right how i interpret this work and what I think it is and if it moved me and maybe completely different from hey I just did a sculpture and this is I put it together but and it had it has has something to do with like genetics or something like that and I read it as something about the mind then that's successful right no work I mean you cannot uh, and, and when you create work, you can try to come close to what you your intent and and if you if you match, what your your intent is with the, how the viewer reads, and that's great, but it's equally good if people read it a completely different way. I just have to commend the amount of work that was put into this and the craftsmanship and the skill. I think one thing that has dissipated, um, you know, not, oh, sorry, uh, not not here, but what's dissipated in the art world, um, it's, it's a controversial thing I'm saying, but is skill and technique. You know, things have gone, a lot of things have gone digitally, Things have gone where people are using, um, you know, modern things, and the 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 craft, the 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 use of the hand, and the use of craft, the use of tools. Um, you know, I think that the the uh, you know we have to you know appreciate and kind of keep that. Where you know there's a lot of movement saying, hey, you know what, that shouldn't matter so much as long as the output is the same. But here, I think it shows the amount of skill that was involved in creating this masterpiece. So congratulations, Arthur. This was beautiful. Jennifer Quarter. So, um, you know, when I first saw this, I didn't know what. I mean, I, I didn't really look at the title, and then I saw, uh, I had to magnify it and realize what it was, and you know. Uh, to me, it says mussels, but I, put, I can kind of put mussels and oysters in the same world. Um, I hate oysters. I think they look gross. But you made something that, to me, looks awful. I mean, you know, personally, you know, not appeasing to a, a work that's beautiful. And not only that, spoke to, spoke to how um, the sea and, uh, you know, and, and things be, can be brought together to create beauty and i think it's kind of speak uh, speaks to the you know the swirling of the ocean i felt it felt like it was uh you know uh, it felt almost like a swarming of a uh, swarming of uh of the ocean coming back to telling us that he, they're not happy um i thought i mean this was not the one that i i, I believe that jennifer put in a, a couple pieces that had the use of muscles. I think this was just beautifully, beautifully done. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it comes across as a painting, as a sculpture, as a, a, a an installation. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I would be. I mean, I'm kind of excited to see this in person to see, um, you know, the scale and the details of itself. So, uh, and uh, you know, I, I think just uh, being able to uh, select and finding the, uh, the right shells to create this work pretty amazing and this is not the work that you would see at the ocean gift shop at the beach gift shop you know how you see you know shell, shell work this is a this this is a whole different level and i think uh, and i commend you on and the beauty and the skill uh, and the technique that you did this thank a uh, wonderful work and i can go to the next one this is a uh, so you know photograph photography you know, the, uh, when I talk to students, when they're sub submitting portfolios about uh, and and their uh, their medium is photography, 
Uh, they, uh, you know, I encourage people to find moments and things that they see that people may just like overlook, right? It's like when you're able to capture something, a capture a moment, and it, and it comes across as beyond just what the surf, just what it looks like. This picture, this photograph is sticks coming out of the water. However, it also looks like it looks like birds flying in the sky. It also feels like bones of fish in the ocean. It looks it also feels like, you know, a, 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 like elements going through back and forth through the sky. There is also a moment of, oh, I don't know, what, let's see, like a desolate of like beauty and desolation, loneliness at the same time, but also done in, the, in, in such a beautiful way. And it is just a reflection of a thing stick sticking out of water. So how you made something so simple, something that maybe just overlooked and capturing it in the right color and the right moment, the right point of time and, and how it was presented and cropped. And I think it was just beautiful. So uh, I commend Raphael on this beautiful photograph. So Edward, um, besides the skill on this and this playfulness in this, this is you have taken Mondrian, Pete Mondrian, and gave it a whole different look. If, if you don't know who Pete Mondrian, Pete Mondrian did a movement. He's a Dutch artist, and he was part of what was called the Stil, which is translated as the style. Um, and he is known for using primary colors, white and black. And if you ever seen the Partridge family, this is where, you know, I, I date myself, but I look, looking at the audience, I think we're all the same age, but students have no idea what they're talking about. But Partridge family, um, the bus was done in this same pattern. If you know, I think it was Christian Dior, he did a, he did a fashion line using, um, uh, uh, you know, Pete Mondrian's pattern, but that's just a reference. But Pete Mondrian uh, had a movement where he, want, he thought that everything can be translated can be reduced to three of uh, to red, yellow, and blue, and uh, black and white, and need variations of it. So, um, and this here, and he also did a work called Electric Boogaloo. This kind of brought that mind to it. I think you, I, I don't know if this was the intent of it, but how you modernized it by making it into a sculpture. You also, there's a, the element that I got was not only the Piet Mondrian feel to it. I don't know if that was the intent or by accident or, or if, if what, what it was, but there is also a, a element of technis, technology into it. You know, I think of like a computer chip. Um, I think of, uh, you know, uh, something that's, you know, technical and electric at the same time Adhering to this, adhering to, adhering to Pete Mondrian's distill idea of reducing and creating this geometric and circular work that's three D and that pops out. I think it's, as a as a work of design, it's it's pretty amazing. And I congratulate you on that, Edward. It was really really well done. Georgie, the calm before the storm. Not only this was a beautifully drawn picture image. You know, uh, the image that it captured of so showing a farm, what seems to be like a farmland, reminiscent of the Wizard of Oz. But in this fashion, we're seeing an animal, a farm animal, a goat, and a woman calmly um, communicating or petting her, uh, the farm animal, while there is a the force of nature happening in the background. And the, I think this speaks a lot to what is happening and how we are dealing with the world today. You know, there are things that are happening to nature. Devastation is happening, tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, things that are, that's out of control and we are living with it. We don't know in this image I see, I don't know if they're, they're looking at each other saying, hey, this is, this is the end. Or is it that, hey, I don't care what's happening in the background or I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's coming. So there's so many different interpretations of that. Besides, I mean, beyond just the craft of how skillfully this is drawn, but I think this this particular image, this this work, speaks so much and can be interpreted so much on, and um so many ways. And the way that and, and and I think it really talks to about you know how we each may interpret what's going on with nature today. So this is I, I found this beautiful. And haunting as well. Quirky art. I hope I'm pronouncing this correct. Uh, I, I don't know if quirky art is uh, the artist's name. Um, 
But I want to show two at the same time, this one and the next one. I think we can scroll back and forth. Um, can we should look at the, this one as well? And then the second one is because there's two works here. And then we can go back to the other one. I just want an opportunity to show both of them at the same time. Hauntingly beautiful. Not only was it beautifully painted, it almost looks like it's a photograph of a sculpture. The meaning that I took behind it wow. is to show these two, two, two black people who are who are painted singularly in a way that they look like they are, um, you know, not only the way that it glistens. I mean, when I see it, it's not it's not a happy painting. It's not a joyful painting. I think it speaks to an emotion of suffering and how we may be treating and looking at this as an object. What brought brought to mind was oil. Uh, a time and period when we used to tar and feather, pe feather people. It looks like, you know, the person is, you know, looking up while they have been through through a lot. And I'm looking, and so this spoke to, uh, I think this had a, a commented about the Black experience. You know, we can only come close to, we can only try to understand as best we can because we can't, we're not, we're not, I mean, I'm not Black. I'm a person of color, but you know, when we when artists present work about um, you know a, another person's you know um, experience, and if I and if we can only try to say, hey, you know, we always say, hey, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how I feel. You'll never know what I'm going through or what how the world is treating me. What we can do is try to show by image and by art, and then find somehow a connection. And to me, I found that connection. Again, I don't, um, you know, I don't know if this is exactly the way the artist wants me to, uh, to review this, but looking at this one, and then we can move on to the next one. Maya, here, looking down, eyes black, covered in, covered in, uh, almost covered in a film of something, right? Glistening, struggling, looking down, and it just kind of shows me about it shows me the pain and uh, the pain and suffering, and the experience that was expressed in this image, done in this aesthetic horror, right? When we, what we call aesthetic horror is, is when we have when there are things that are beautiful, but maybe uh, but the subject matter will be something that maybe that is not that is uncomfortable. So, I I thought that the work by Quirky Art really transcended and really spoke to me and to really, you know, uh, took, you know, the medium of paint, made it a contemporary piece of work, not only, not only beautiful, but also had a message that can be interpreted in many ways. But for me, I think it was a powerful, powerful, powerful painting. And I congratulate Berkey Art. Um, and I think that's the group of honorable mentions, first runner up and first place. So at this point, I guess I'll announce who the first place winner are and then the first runner up. And then everybody else was honorable mention. The first place I chose was quirky art. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's, <laughs> that's, that's correct. For the work that for the work the painting the beautiful painting that was presented and the first runner-up was georgie for the calm before the storm so congratulations and i think I, I guess i would actually really love to hear about the work uh that each of you presented i don't know if we have enough time to go through everyone um i'll let the host kind of dictate how we should run this part i well why don't we start with our runner-up and our first place winner. I think they're both on the call. So if they're willing to share a little bit about uh, their work and what their mindset was when putting it together, I think that would be really enlightening for the group. Well, this is Georgie. So let me let me start <laughs> first. So uh, this, I mean, like uh, what Robert mentioned was actually like uh, right on point. I mean, like uh, it's uh, um living the life and not knowing what to expect to happen next and it was the point of bringing like an ordinary subject and 
by tweaking the landscape behind me bringing into into more like surreal view of like how the world is today and how things are like being run and you know like you know what is happening at this moment but you don't know what is going to happen in the next so it is that concept that i try to depict in that uh, drawing so that's all i have to say if anybody has any questions i'll be more than happy to answer i have a question please how long did it take you to finish this piece <laughs> uh that's uh that's a very interesting question it's one that like i mean like i've been asked frequently and my answer typically is this um artwork can take two hours it can take two days it can take two months it could never finish right you can end up tossing it in the in a trash so to me i mean like it takes what it needs to take to make it happen uh <laughs> and i'll end with that you even made the goat. I mean, just the goat's face is haunting, right? It's it looks the goat looks sad and looking away. You know, it's it's you know, there's a lot of you know, a lot to take in from this image, and you can break it down to a whole bunch of different things. It's just as beautiful. Hi, my name is Corky. Um, <laughs> and yes, you've been saying it right. So thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you, Bobby, for your insightful out. And you were so insightful to my piece. The piece Maya is of my cousin after a breakup. It she was distraught. She was in pain, and she didn't feel beautiful. She really just didn't feel beautiful. And I, I was trying to convince her how beautiful she was at that moment. And it's just it was falling on deaf ears. So I did this painting of her. She stayed at my house for a while. She didn't want to go home, and. It was tiresome, but it was one of my one of my favorite pieces. And now her self esteem. I think I painted this painting about a year ago, roughly. And she goes to some of my exhibitions and see her face on the wall. And people are admiring her. It just did her. It just does her so so good. And I'm thankful that it came across in the way it did. So thank you guys very much for this honor. I truly do appreciate it. And, and thank you for accepting me and seeing me. But any questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> um, Julie, would you mind advancing the slides to court? Thank oh, you. Sorry. Perfect. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions for Corky? How long did it take for you to paint that painting? A weekend. One weekend. That's um, a good weekend. It was, well, when you're cooking for somebody and they're boohooing the entire weekend, it, it, it was stressful. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, it was a good weekend. It just, I needed to be there for somebody. And then during time, I captured and it was just came out really good. Um, I do like the black lacquer look on people I paint, even no matter what their nationality. I just love that look and the contrast with the white background. So I find that very appeasing. I was about to say the black and white contrast, just the way you pull it off is magnificent. Mm -hmm. Thank and, you. and with different races and nationalities as well, because I've I've seen quite a few of your paintings. It's it's just magnificent. And um I think that this was a great juror juror's choice painting. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's quirky. I want a couple things. One is, um, you know, you say actually two things. One is about um, about time. I think people are asking about how long you take time. You know, I, I actually had a lecture about this <laughs> in class with mm -hmm. my students. You know, um, sometimes the time of work, the work that's uh, the work that the, the amount of time one puts into a piece. And the uh, and, and how much it is value, mm -hmm. don't really that, that that does not exist, right? Because you know I know works I know some people that spend years on one painting yeah. until it's done. I know some people that spend six months, and I so know some people, and I know some, uh, that spend a couple hours and create exactly. a masterpiece, right? So you know it's 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 there you know yes there's you know commitments time and ideas but you know the output of what happens sometimes can be you know um, it, it can happen in a moment. Yeah. So well, we want to recognize that time is really not 
shouldn't, uh, is, uh, it may not be a factor. And also people work at different skills. We can think about, you know, if people are like an ableist idea is like, you know, how we can do something quickly, but somebody who may, you know, who, ha who may not have a hands or fingers, they may take a longer time to commit something. So we can't look at time, you know, we should, as far as, you know, how, how hey, how long did you take it with that, right? You know, right. Uh, you can you can actually say, I took a lifetime to do this. It took the, my lifetime to produce. Picasso to make says this something similar. Picasso yeah. says something similar. Why well, he did a circle for a lady and took him a lifetime to master that. But um, I, I try to, I try to teach my experience with art, like it's my relationship. I right I'm single for by choice, but I come in the house and ask Art, what do you want to do today? Like I'm like, what do you want to eat? And she'll guide me and tell me what to do. So I try to spend as much time creating as much as humanly possible. So when I do have those great moments, it's a fertile ground for me to keep producing hopefully good work. Excellent. Um, you know, the other part I was gonna say is um, you know, sometimes. I don't know. I mean, I I feel like in some way, I can I always say that nothing's by accident. Sometimes, right? When 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 we look at good art, um, you know, it's 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 not by accident. Uh, we know that it's uh, there's a limit limit element of of passive aggressiveness, where people say something or present something one way, and if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Right. If you don't understand it, you're never going to get it. Right. But for the people who other people for other people, it will, uh, you, you know, you'll you'll appreciate it a different way. So in this work, you see what you say is, hey, you know, it was about my sister who was coming to a point where we're having a, a tough time. Yeah. Beautiful image. But there is more. I, think, but, I mean, yeah, by looking at that, yeah. there is certainly more than that, because the, the technique that you chose of having it look like lacquer or having it look like shiny, it not only looks like it's, it's it looks like a, a glistening work, but there me there is an element of uh, there is a film. There is something that covered this person, right? That whatever that covered is that you know that the person is living through and uh, uh, you know it's the skin on top of the skin that was presented yep. on the uh, you have their skin and then what was forcibly put on top of them right and the, how one deals with that and how one survives through that that is that is the thing that that you 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 presented and again i i say it by accident or by design and i feel like for artists for real artists you know subconsciously they it is done by with intent you know maybe not fully aware but there is like saying it's you're doing it because uh, because it, it because it really ha there's a reason why I did that. I could have chosen white. I could have made it wet matte. You know, I could have used made it pink. Or, you know, I could have chose made the background to be gray, but it is flat white, right? I could have had the person looking up, down, but all these were choices that you made to create this idea in mind. And I feel like people who know it will see it. Will see it. And people, people who don't will appreciate the beauty of it. And that's what that's what I think is so wonderful about it, because it adds these two elements to it. And it, 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 it speaks to a broad audience. Um, and again, that's another reason why this would this 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 would this spoke to me so much. And, and I really appreciate the work that you did. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely beautiful. I mean, and I love hearing the story behind it. That's the best thing. What I love about being part of MFA is being able to connect with the artists and learn about their work at the same time. So thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. It looks like we do have time. Um, I see that Jenny is on the call and Raphael is also on the call. Would one of you like to share um, about the work that you um presented or that was honor, uh, honorable mentioned? I'm happy to. Thank you, uh, Robert. Thank you so much for um, this honor and your interpretation. I appreciated listening to that. Um, for me, um, my, my art form is something that sort of developed in me over time. And it's funny you mentioned the oyster because I used to work with oyster shells, um, but I've transitioned to really enjoying the mussel shell, which you know, is an everyday ordinary object when you look at one of them alone, um, but they're very expressive shells. And when you put them together, I, I think you can really make something that's beautiful. 
um, I can say for myself, when I'm creating a piece, it's a meditative experience for me. And I also enjoy um, gazing at it when it's finished in a meditative kind of way. So I like the idea of taking an ordinary object found in nature um, and putting a collection of them together of different sizes, different shapes, um, different degrees of so-called beauty, some with scars, some without scars and perfect, so to speak. But all together, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Um, and it offers me this meditative experience. And I found that um, as I've gotten to show my art to different people that others experience that too. So that brings me joy and I'm very honored to be part of this and thank you very much. And I can try to answer questions if anybody has any. No, Jennifer, I want to say one thing about that. So, you know, sometimes people use pieces of nature to create something different. Like, um, how, how, how can I say it? Like, um, um, they make, uh, let's say, uh, they would take shells or like the fur or the skin of something to make something completely not related to it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and here, actually using the the uh, the 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 shells, and not not hiding the fact that it's a shell. It is a shell, and, and kind of glorifying the beauty of it, and the and also how you brought it together and the smooth. I don't consider it smooth sailing. I consider it like a like a, a gathering of forces, almost like a. Uh, kind of like a swirling before the storm like you know you don't like it, it, it you don't want to dive into that because <laughs> there the shell will, will, will capture you and eat you up and you know you would fall into the abyss of this of uh, the swirling um water so i felt um, you know i guess in one way it's meditative as well but i also think it's very powerful to me thank you thank you Okay, and then Raphael, I see you are unmuted. Are you willing to share with us a little bit about your sure. piece? Uh, what you're looking at is landscape that's been changed in some way by human presence. And it comes out of a, a background in occupational and environmental medical research. I spent about 40 years at that. And you can show cliche, cliches of, of environmental degradation. I mean, there, there's almost a standard language of uh, things that have rotted or been in some way uh, damaged. Uh, the idea here is to get you to look long enough at something that has been modified by human presence, but to get you to look long enough that you'll think about it in a different way. So Beautiful. You know, it also looks like, in, in some way, I also saw like an archaeological find of bones. Yeah, it's a, sort of a petro, uh, petroglyph, but this is actually a salt marsh and the road was repaired across it and they left just a single small culvert uh, to let the water flow in and out with the tide. And the end result is that they killed most of the vegetation. And so what you're looking at are the skeletons of uh, what was there originally in the salt marsh. That's amazing. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for sharing. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Julie Oaks, for running the technology behind the scenes from our MFA office from Circle Gallery. Um, congratulations to all of the award recipients. And please make sure to come see the work in person at our fall member show closing reception on October 14th. And with that, I will sign off and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Be brave, right? You know, work that you don't think may be uh, worthwhile or acceptable or only thing that you appreciate, but you don't think other people will appreciate, um, forget about that. Put your soul into your work and share it.